Shalom. And uh, welcome to Beth Messiah's Friday night online service. We'll be doing this for a little longer. I don't know how much longer, you know, it's just the way it is right now. Uh, Saturday service is at Beth Messiah and uh, at 11 o'clock a.m. But Friday nights, we've been doing this online. And sometimes we've had some come in and be um, a part of it through um, through leading worship from another location. Tonight, we're just going to do one song uh, on the phone here, on my phone um, software, uh, that um, is sung uh, by... Um, uh, Julia Vitito, and it's a song that uh, that uh, God put on my heart. So we did one last week. Now we're going to do one this week, just to sort of like a shorten worship time. So let's open in prayer, and then we're going to talk about from number 16, 1 to 15, which is the portion of the week, Korach, and the pretty intense, heavy portion. And we're going to talk about be your spiritual self, and actually... Um, uh, um, you can look if you if you are watching or you go on uh, to watch this later. Uh, uh, we have a um, uh, on uh, uh, well we sent it out at Beth uh, at, on our email what we call our email list the um, the uh, outline and so you can actually you can actually look at that outline there and uh, you can follow along with us. And so uh, let's let's uh, open in prayer. Uh, Eli Abraham Yitzchak, the Yaakov, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for this time together, and um, we just commit this this uh, short time of uh, with a song worship and this uh, this message to you tonight, O oh God. We want to thank you for all that you're doing, B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. We actually are going to. Um, uh, just sing the Shema. I don't have the, the Ahavta. I kind of have, it's, I know it, but uh, I should go in the other room and get it. But I'm not going to. So uh, let's let's do the Shema, and we'll we'll uh, should have. I'm not. I wasn't prepared exactly. But anyway, uh, but let's do the Shema, and we'll begin with the Shema, and then uh, we'll go on from there to to the rest of our our, our evening. Okay. All right. Shema is from Deuteronomy six. Hero Israel, okay? Shema, say it with me. Sing it with me if you know it, okay? On this Friday evening as we usher in the Shabbat. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem, Kavod Malchuto Leolam Ba'ed. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever and ever. The Lord, we, we serve one God and, and all the ways in which he reveals himself to us, but it is one God. Amen. Okay, great. We're not, we won't do the Via Hafta tonight. We're just going to go into the message, but we're going to begin before that with a song. This is a song God laid on my heart. And um, we are going to... Uh, um get this song somehow <laughs> to work um and let's see if i can't if i can't do that i'm brilliant at this right i had it all prepared but um okay there it is all right here's a song and the song is called um my very own okay so just Take some time, close your eyes, or just worship in spirit and in truth. Just spend time before the Lord is, as uh, Julia Vitito, uh Pierce sings this song. You know, my very uh, my wife actually wrote the lyrics to this song, and um, and so let's let's just have a worshipful attitude just for this one song. We sometimes we have somebody leading worship from another location for a few minutes, but uh, right now. But we, we're just uh, doing this uh, uh, song as it's recorded. My very own, sung by Julia Vitito Pierce, okay? I have chosen you and called you by name. Lift up your head, be not afraid, I will comfort you. Grass and flowers fade. The 
this you should understand the glory of God will be revealed his word alone shall stand hear ye death look ye Hashem, you are my very own, very relevant message, and 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 a message that uh, we will talk about uh, right now in in the um, in what we are going to share tonight. So lift me up in prayer as I share this evening. We will be also at Beth Messiah tomorrow, sharing this and having worship and doing other things at the eleven o'clock a.m. service. But um, glad to have you with us this evening. Number 16, 1 to 15, this evening. The portion is Korach. It's kind of a painful portion because it uh, really um, reveals the holiness of God and, and some things related to uh, rebellion and so forth. Now Korach, or Korah, the son of Itzhar, the son of Kohat, the son of Levi, with Jatan and Aviram, the sons of Eliab, and On the son of Pelet, the sons of Reuven, took men. And they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation. So this was the leadership under Moses. These were, these were Zakanim, elders, as they're called Zakanim or elders in Exodus uh, when they were worshiping God there and he revealed his glory representatives of the congregation men of renown so everybody knew who these guys were they gathered together against moses and aaron and said to them you take too much upon yourselves for all the congregation is holy every one of them and the lord is among them why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the lord and moses actually um as I'll say in a minute, it was a very, very humble person when God had called him to this. But um, at any rate, uh, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a very um, involved, uh, involving scenario here 
where Moses finds that all of his leaders, or most of them, were rising up to rebel against him and uh, to take over uh, and to kick him out. So when Moses heard it, he fell on his face and he spoke to Korah and all of his company, saying, tomorrow morning the Lord will show who is his and who is holy and will cause him to come near to him. Do this, take censers, Korah, or Korah, and all your company. Put fire in them and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord chooses is the Holy One. You take too much on yourselves, you sons of Levi. They were, they were um, accusing him of that, and he put, puts it back in their face. Then Moses, or Moshe said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi, is it a small thing? And now this is really the important thing that each of us has a call and we're not to compare ourselves to others or to, or, or to covet, uh, you know, in that sense. Is it a small thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near himself? That's the number one thing is that he... He wanted them to draw near to him. He wanted a close personal relationship with the um, with the uh, the Kohanim, the the priesthood and the high priesthood, to do the work of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation and to serve them, which was an honor to serve the people. And that he has brought near to himself. He emphasizes that again. You and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. And are you seeking the priesthood also, meaning to be the leaders of the priests? Therefore, you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord. So God makes it very clear that it's really him they're rebelling against. And what is Aaron that you should complain against him? And of course, after that, you know, judgment falls on them which we're not going to talk about those verses. And, uh, but you can read about that, right? You can read about that if you want to. So I want to talk about being your spiritual self. God has a special call. And again, you've got your outline, some of you, that you can look at. God has a special call for each one of us. Everyone has a call from the Lord. Each of us is precious in his sight and is fully a child of God. And so all of us has a special, have a special call from him. And the first call is to worship him with our whole mind, heart, mind, and strength and to love him with our whole hearts and to, and to love uh, others and serve them uh, as, we, as we love ourselves. That's our first call. I mean, that's got to be the, the, the vessel into which anything is poured that we do uh, in his name. And so that's real important. And Moses, in his humility, understood that God has a special call for each one and that my call may not be your call. And Moses had a very important position, but he had no problem with Aaron's lineage call. And you think about that because Moses didn't have a calling that was going to go to his children, his children, 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 and so forth and so on. Um, you know, he wasn't going to be crowning himself king. And he, there wasn't a king in those days and until way later. And uh, he wasn't going to start a dynasty. And he had no problem with the fact that there was a sort of dynasty that God called Aaron's uh, which is his brother, but his line, that would be the high priestly line, too. He could have initiated a royal house. He could have challenged Aaron. There could have been great problems along those lines. One of the things about the founding of our nation with all of its problems and all of its imperfections is that the way that the pattern was set up, there wasn't going to be any kind of lineage situation or somebody that was going to try to hold on to power it would be elections every few years. And that was something very, very new. And some of Washington's compadres, friends, people from Europe, England and elsewhere, you know, thought that it was crazy 
and said he should be crowned king. This is the way you do it. You have the power, you're crowned king, you can take that to yourself. Look at Napoleon and how after the French Revolution, he became the emperor, uh, in a sense, of, of France. This is the way it should be done, you know. And even if something else was called for, he had the power. But what was called for was three co-equal branches of government. And if we look at the situation with Moses and later with the kings of Israel, there were the kings, there were the priests, the high priests. God allowed this sort of um, co-equal, in a sense, if you want to call it that, these kind of branches, and then the prophets came along. The Messiah kind of wrapped all that up in one. He's a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. He is the king of Israel according to what the scripture teaches, um, all of that in Psalm 110 and elsewhere, and King Messiah, uh, Melech Mashiach. And then, and then uh, you know, and then you had... Uh, you had to the priesthood and the kingship and the he's, he, he's a prophet like Moses so it's all wrapped up in him but you can see that God you know scattered these various gifts uh, in Israel for there to be unity and work together and one would need the other and indeed you know the priests challenged the king sometimes and uh, or I should say the prophets especially challenge the kings and the priests and uh, we can see a number of these things so um that's that's kind of like uh uh you know what we're what we're seeing there we in the body of those who know the messiah we we have a diverse and healthy body situation there's a wonderful song called we being many which some of you are familiar with that Marty Getz wrote and that he sings, well, he used to sing it with his wife, Jenny, now he sings it with his daughter, Misha. And um, this, this song is taken from Romans 12, four and five. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many, which is where the name of that song comes from. We being many are one body in Messiah loving each other serving each other and some of you know the lyrics better than me and you're singing them now are one body in the messiah and individually which is also part of the lyrics members of one another romans 12 4 and 5 we being many are one body. this is what is so beautiful extraordinary about the very body of the lord and even if we have different callings and god wants us to find our call each of us has a mixture of the way they work in our lives that is specific to ourselves. So you might have some of this aspect of it or some of that, but the way that they're expressed and mixed and combined in your life is specific to itself and part of the varied call that the Lord gives. These are given by God and they're called the motivational gifts. Now, there are three places where gifts are talked about. The Second uh, um, Corinthians twelve. They actually see three places where the word prophecy is used, also in regard to it. Three different aspects of it. So we have it in Romans twelve six, which is the motivational uh, gifts, and then there are the uh, supernatural spiritual giftings in First Corinthians twelve, and then there are the gifts of men. Uh, not to leave women out, but but literally it means that. I mean, it means it means gifts in the body of leadership and oversight, which is you know, in Ephesians five, excuse me, Ephesians four eleven. So you have the proclamational gift of prophecy in First Corinthians twelve ten. You have the office gift in Ephesians four eleven, and you've got the motivational gift in Romans twelve, where we are now. In six to eight, that's so beautiful, and so it says, "If prop, uh, if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, or ministry, let us use it in our ministering or serving, uh, in that way, and that is a gift that God gives, a motivational gift 
we find ourselves motivated to serve in very practical ways, in very supportive ways, undergirding ways. He who teaches in teaching. So some people have a, a gift in that area and it's motiva they're motivated in a pure way to, to teach or he who exhorts an exhortation. And some of us have that sprinkled throughout. I think there's some of that in my, me and there are some of that in many of you that, you know, we, we are called to give somebody a supportive, underburdening, exhortive encouragement in their lives. And they feel like they have a new vision about what God has in their lives and a new encouragement about who they are in him. When they've been with you, the gift of exhortation, he who gives with liberality. Now, that's an unusual one because, you know, you think about giving. But some people, and people give, they everybody gives in some way, shape, or form, and they give in practical ways. But some people are gifted in giving, and this is in practical ways. They have the, the um, you know, God gives them the ability to, to generate some of that uh, wealth or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be wealthy, but generate generate that kind of thing. And they are gifted at giving in a special way. And it says with liberality there. So they're, 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 they, they scatter abroad and bless people and they love doing it. Okay. He who leads with diligence. So there is this motivational gift of leadership. And people follow that and it's a blessing for them as well. And he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. That's one of my favorite ones. And notice that God gives the gift of mercy along with cheerfulness. Otherwise, when you're showing mercy to those who desperately need it, but have a hard time receiving it, you might get dragged down. But he adds cheerfulness to it so that you can show that mercy, be merciful to those who need that forgiveness. And there's that scripture in Galatians, the sixth chapter, that says, you who restore somebody, you know, restore them with gentleness. And, uh, and so if you're looking to yourself, that's you too be tempted. So there's that scripture in Galatians 6, which says that, you know, if you are, uh, if anybody is caught in a fault or, 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 or in, 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 entangled in, in things that are, that are, that are, um, binding them, holding them back. You go and minister to them and you show mercy to them. Uh, just like the man who committed a grievous sin at 1 Corinthians and then Rabbi Saul says in the 2 Corinthians, he says, listen, you know, go and show him he's repented. You know, we don't want him to be grieved unto, you know, total self-condemnation. We want to have mercy there. I'm sure some of those people with the gift of mercy went and visited him or asked him to visit with them and said, you're forgiven. It's time to move on. God's given you the victory. We're going to, we're going to support you in this. If you're tempted again, we're right there with you and all of that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so uh, prophecy as a distinction of being in all three gift lists, motivational, the office and the intuitive proclamational uh, motivational Romans twelve six, office the office of prophetic office in Ephesians four eleven, and proclamational in First Corinthians twelve ten, which is interesting. But if you don't choose a mosaic pattern of humility, you could end up like Korah, because all these gifts are wonderful, but it's always to be done in love. And love, as we know from 1 Corinthians uh, 13, love has a humility, a humility aspect to it. It's not puffed up, as it says there. It's humble and all that kind of stuff. So if you don't choose mosaic humility, you could end up like Korah. After all, he was a highly gifted priest. He was probably a great leader. But pride short-circuited Korah. And it led to his destruction. Uh, you know, it's interesting that um, that uh, it says not a new believer. In uh, Rabbi Saul says, 
in, uh, I think it's in Timothy. I was going to look up the verse and I got distracted, but he says, you know, that you should not be a new believer put into leadership lest you get conceited and fall under the condemnation of the uh, of the evil one. So that there's a certain amount of maturity that's necessary to be able to lead, take on responsibility, be a man that person or woman that person looks to. And uh, there is mosaic humility that's needed there. He's called uh, the most humble man in his day on the face of the earth. That's so key. That humility is so key. And that humility, it's easy to be entreated. You're not going around judging people and looking down on them and condemning them when they slip. You're there to pull them up. You're an exhorter and you're an encourager and you're, 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 you have a gentle heart. And this is the, this is the, this is the mosaic humility that, that God wants us to have. It starts with learning in the third part, which we're almost finished the message. It, stir, it, it, it starts with learning to love who you are in God's eyes. Korah must have had some self-loathing without being aware of it, or maybe he was. He thought he had to be an Aaron in the high priesthood in order to be of worth. But that wasn't true. He had a very high calling, leading the priesthood the way he did. And he had everything going for him until, as it says about Hasatan in um, Isaiah 14, until pride was found in him, until the flaw was found in him. That's when the problem was. He also didn't want to serve others. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 12 that says excuse me i just need to get it open my bible and get it that says um for we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. And so we, we are not to compare ourselves with other people and rank ourselves and either judge them or envy them. Um, and he didn't want to be a servant. You know, uh, God has called us to be like a server in a cafeteria line. People come in, in the line I'll have the mashed potatoes, okay? You serve them. This is what God wanted from Korah in the priesthood, bringing the sacrifices, preparing them, praying with people to claim God's forgiveness for their sins. This is the way he wanted it to be. Here's what Moses says to Korah about what God wanted from him and how he fell short. Moses said to Korah, Hear now, you sons of Levi, is it a small thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the work of the tabernacle of the Lord? Is it a small thing? Is it? Well, no, it isn't a small thing. It was a major, major calling. But they, he belittled it. And to stand before the congregation to serve them to stand before the congregation as a servant, like a person serving people mashed potatoes in a cafeteria line, to serve the people. A lot of hard work involved, working with the sacrifices, meeting the spiritual needs of people who are coming for forgiveness, a lot of stuff there. And then he has brought you near himself, you and all your brethren, the sons of Levi with you. And are you seeking the priesthood also? Are you, are you envious of the high priestly position that, that, that Aaron has? Is that what it is? Well, you're missing the boat totally because you have a tremendous call to fulfill and you're comparing yourself with somebody else. You're envying them. You want to be who they are. 
And that's not what God has for you. That's why I call this the message here. Be your spiritual self. And find out who God created you to be and what all your gifts are. We listed some of them from the three places. I mean, we did it more in detail from Romans 12, 6 to 8, because those are the motivational gifts. And the other ones are in Ephesians 4, 11, and in 1 Corinthians 12, list of gifts there and all all three have the prophecy gifts which is interesting and to find out what god has called you to and how he's called you some people just have a burning heart to help others to understand spiritual reality in the messiah in a very specific way to help them in their walk to help them find his grace and mercy and to walk in it Others have other gifts that God calls them to. But each one of us has a calling from the Lord. And the more we spend time in his presence and take out time with him, the more as we reflect his love. And, uh, you know, as it says in 2 Corinthians, there about we all reflect him as in a mirror. And then... Uh, as we do that, as we reflect his love, then we find out what God has called us to. And we live that out in, in real sincerity, you know, uh, and in real truth. And we find out who God has called us to be. Um, so that's kind of what the message is for tonight. I hope that was encouraging to you. And... Um, you can uh, definitely um, listen to this again. We're going to be at the service tomorrow. And that's when we take up the offering there for the congregation. But you can look on our website to see how to do that through the Internet or through the uh, street uh, mailing address. Um, we normally have Friday night services at Beth Messiah and we have worship and we do all these other things. But we um, don't have that uh, situation going on just yet. We will, we will keep in touch with everybody, okay? All right, well, let's close with the ironic benediction. Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmarecha, Yair Adonai penavolecha v'yichunecha, Yisa Adonai penavolecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lift the light of his countenance up and give you peace. Yishem Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar Shalom, as he's called that in Isaiah 9 among the other titles, the Prince of Peace. In the name of Yeshua, we love you. And Shabbat Shalom, or if this isn't Shabbat that you're listening to that, we are saying Shalom, uh, Shalom and, and be blessed. And uh, Shalom Aleichem, uh, Shalom to you. God bless you and we love you.